You are watching Oklahoma's News Channel 4 at 5. OSU fans pouring into San Antonio as we speak, counting down the final four. But there's one special fan who wouldn't dare miss the trip. He could be their key to victory. Plus, a new terror threat just issued today has Oklahomans on edge. What prompted home front security officials to raise the level and why you should be concerned? And rising gas prices have many going to desperate measures to fill their tanks. See how some Oklahoma gas stations are taking their own measures to stop pirates at the pump. Thank you for being here and good evening. I'm Tammy Payne. I'm Les West. Happy Friday. We begin tonight at 5 with breaking news, a high-speed chase through the metro. It all came to a crashing halt at Northwest 23rd and Walker. You can see the scene there from Chopper 4. We're told Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics agents were trying to pull over a drug suspect at I-40 in Eastern when he took off. Authorities say the suspect threw out a semi-automatic gun out of the car under the 23rd Street Bridge at Lincoln. Then he allegedly started tossing drugs out of the car as well. The suspect's vehicle jumped the median at Walker and crashed into oncoming traffic. That's where agents backed into custody. Well, whether you're heading to Texas or not, OSU fans are definitely getting pumped for tomorrow's Final Four game. While the Cowboy team is being kept in isolation, so to speak, fans are pouring into San Antonio. And there's one member of the OSU contingency that you've probably seen a lot of lately while watching the games on TV. News Channel Force Kevin Ogle and Sports Director Bob Berry Jr. in San Antonio for all the action. They're joining us now live with more. Wish we were there, guys. I bet you do, Tammy. Kind of a rainy, overcast day here in San Antonio, but it didn't really matter, Bobby, because most of the action and what the OSU fans wanted to see today was under the dome. Kevin, it's uh, Final Four Friday, which yeah. is when people get to come in for free and watch these excellent basketball teams practice. We'll guesstimate a crowd anywhere from 15 to 25,000 that watched OSU practice before their national semifinal against Georgia Tech tomorrow night at 5.07. But I can tell you what, there's a lot of media people, too. Here's more. Here's an idea of how the Final Four is so much bigger than a regional. Just look at the massive media in OSU's locker room. Probably a hundred people or more. But the Pokes now expect all of the publicity. Yeah, I'm kind of used to it, but uh, I'm really ready to see how, how many people. They said it's going to be like 25,000 people out here when we go practice. I'm, I'm just anxious to see that so far. But it hasn't really hit me that it's a Final Four right now. It's still feel like we're preparing for a Big 12 game. I don't think it's like a Big 12 game, though, Kevin. Tony Allen saying he after practice, he goes, okay, this was altogether different. And the fans enjoyed it, too. They know it's a new experience down oh, here in San Antonio. They loved it. I tell you, we were in there with them today. And I don't know about you, but there's one person uh, with the OSU contingency I've been wondering about all through March Madness because I keep seeing this person on network television. And you're going to meet him next, too, because he was part of the excitement in there today. Take a look. Some of the Cowboys' youngest fans set the proper mood for the afternoon because this is what they all came to see. They're Cowboys on center stage at the Alamo Dome, even if it's just for an afternoon shoot-around. And it seems the veteran OSU fans are here just in case it's Eddie Sutton's last hurrah on the hardwood. I think it's wonderful. I mean, if, if, if he stays some more, we're wonderful to have him and grateful to have him. But if he goes out, what a better way to go out. And this young man has been on network TV a lot lately during the NCAA tournament, showing off his fashion statement. The cameras just can't seem to stay away from OSU pep band drummer Cody Bicey. And anything we can do to, to help, you know, get the energy going, get the crowd hyped, that's what we're here for. What do your folks say when they see you on there and say, I think that's my son, I'm not sure. You know, a lot of people have, uh, have said, you know, I thought that was you, but I'm not sure. Uh, and I, I've even heard some announcers, uh, you know, speculating, is this his real hair, is it a wig, I don't know. It's, it's fun, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, we can tell you that we got to, release the secret. It is a wig. I bet you probably already guessed that by now. Coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to focus on two OSU fans who have become legendary during this run through March Madness. That for you tonight at 6 o'clock. Back to you. All right. We'll look forward. Thank you, too. Guys, we'll see you in a few minutes. Now, first weather from the forewarned storm team. That is Kevin and Bobby are telling you some rain down in San Antonio. We'll update the forewarned storm tracker and show you where that rain is right now. Here in Oklahoma, a great day. Central Oklahoma temperatures in the low to mid 70s. What a beautiful way to begin the weekend. I do want to show you all the cloud cover and showers and thunderstorms from far southwest Oklahoma, Texas Panhandle down towards San Antonio. Many of these have been producing heavy amounts of rain on the forewarned storm tracker, even uh, some hail and a risk of tornadoes.
athletic activity in South Texas. Look at these big boomers just to the west of San Antonio. So more uh, rocking and rolling down there, not only on the hardwood, but also weather-wise. And here in Oklahoma, some heavy thunderstorms as well, running from just north of Mangum to just to the west of Hobart. But those are moving away from Oklahoma City. They're moving to the west. So we're going to update that 41 forecast for the weekend coming up. All right, Mike, thank you. Tonight, a new terror threat that authorities right here in Oklahoma are taking very seriously. New intelligence suggesting terrorists are planning to hit U.S. cities this summer with explosives similar to those used in the Oklahoma City bombing. News Channel 4 is Heather Holman following that story. She talked to state security advisors today and joins us live with more on what she found out today. Heather? Well, Lance, the threat does not list specific cities, but officials here in Oklahoma City say they aren't taking any chances here. Now, the prime targets right now are trains and buses, and officials say you, the public, can help protect them. These pictures were shot thousands of miles from home. From trains to buses, terrorists are striking overseas, and new intelligence suggests their eyes are now pointed on U.S. transportation systems. That's a warning to us, and we have to heed that warning. State Homeland Security Director Carrie Pettingale says the uncorroborated intelligence suggests terrorists could use bombs made from ammonium nitrate fertilizer and diesel fuel, ingredients known all too well in Oklahoma City. The bombs may be hidden in luggage smuggled through airports, and they could strike as early as this summer when more people are vacationing and riding public transportation. They always want a, uh, a large target, whether it is something that's going to have a large economic impact or obviously, um, you know, a death toll uh, brings them a lot of notoriety. They are trained to look for anything that's not supposed to be there. Metro Transit officials have already trained their drivers for the what-ifs. Each driver inspects the buses outside and inside before and after their route, searching for anything suspicious. And with the latest terror threats, more precautions could be on the way. In the past, we've, uh, we've actually had security some security guards randomly to buses just to give both our operators and our passengers uh, confidence that the system is safe. And authorities say public awareness can actually help defeat terrorism. So here's what they want you to do. They want you to be on the lookout for anything suspicious, anything like cars being left for an extended amount of time or packages, especially, though, people hanging around trains and buses when they shouldn't be. It could make all the difference. Lance. Heather Holman Live tonight. Thank you. TSA officials say their security remains high at airports nationwide. We are still awaiting a response from Amtrak at this hour. You know, a lot of motorists are getting pumped up over high prices at the pumps. And coming up next, see how some Oklahoma gas stations are fighting back against gas pump thieves. And in tonight's great state, something very unusual has happened to one Oklahoma family. How this little girl is changing family history for more than a decade. That's next on Oklahoma's News Channel 4 at 5 o'clock. You are watching Oklahoma's News Channel 4 at 5 with Tammy Pay. Lance West, the forewarned storm team's Mike Morgan, and Bob Barry with sports. She coached at a local YMCA. Tonight, an Oklahoma mom is accused of molesting one of her own players. Plus, two prisoners escape from a local jail, but they're not the first to break free. Tonight, it's just scary. Will the town take action to keep their criminals locked up? That's tonight at 6 on Oklahoma's News Channel 4. You know, gas prices across the country are reaching record highs, and with the price hike comes the increase in a certain kind of crime. It's called gas pump piracy. On tonight's Crime Watch, News Channel 4's Natalie Newman shows us how many metro gas stations are fighting back tonight. When the gas prices go up, we have more and more people wanting to not pay for the gas. $5 on pump three? Yes, sir. Cameron Wood represents the hundreds of gas station clerks in the metro fed up with people shoplifting gas. Oh yes, they get slick every day. They find some new ways of doing it. Wood says when the thieves are done filling up with gas, sometimes instead of hanging the pump back up, which sends a signal into the store to the clerk that they're done, they lay the pump down on the ground and then take off. So they drive away and we never know it's off until somebody hangs up the gas pump. But that was before the station put up signs requiring people to pay before they pump. We don't turn on the pumps unless they're one of our regular customers that come in at least once a day that we know by face. Drivers filling up their tanks say it's the sign of the times. Sometimes it's an inconvenience, but I mean, you know, so the owner doesn't get ripped off, it's, it's okay with me. Because a lot of people steal gas, you know what I'm saying? So if you're going to, you can't, I can't risk that as gas is 
too much, you know what I'm saying? It might just be out there and just roll away. And prepay works. Since this station initiated the program a month ago, it hasn't had any drive-offs, which means it's no longer losing money. Natalie Newman, Oklahoma's News Channel 4. We did check with Oklahoma City Police, and yesterday alone they had 27 gas drive-offs. One thief stole $44 worth of gasoline. That's a big tank. That is. A lot of people not happy about that price. Yeah. We can get used to this, can't we? It really needs to roll on into the weekend, Mike yeah, Morgan. We'll see if we can keep momentum going, Lance. We're tracking sunshine and thunderstorms across our state. A little bit of everything as we head toward an Oklahoma weekend. We'll update your forecast coming up on Oklahoma's News Channel 4. You are watching KFOR, Oklahoma's News Channel 4. On May 3rd, 1872, a little girl was born to the family of Johannes Saturn. She was one of 11 children, and she died as an infant. But after her, something happened to the Saturns. Generation after generation, five of them came along. All were boys until one year ago today. Tonight, Galen Culver has the story of a special little girl who broke the mold and how she's spending her first birthday today. She probably won't remember her first birthday. Hardly anyone ever does. But her parents will tell her about how her cousin Aiden, aunts and uncles, grandparents, and even her great-grandpa Joe came all the way from Nebraska to celebrate the first anniversary of her astounding birth. See your cousin. That's something great, really great. After a whole year, the overwhelming Yay. evidence that Jordan is indeed all girl is still sinking in. The reason? You have to go back so far, close to a century and a half, to find another one. So I never figured I'd get this far along. After Johannes Saturn and his brood of 11, six girls and five boys, this Norwegian family kept having boys generation after generation of them. Thank you, singing. Young Eugene wondered if he might someday break the X chromosome cycle, but it took a move to Oklahoma and help from his wife, Heather, who was from a normal family of girls, to do it. And they uh, told us that uh, during an ultrasound we was going to have a girl, and I never believed it. Uh, my wife, she kind of did the same thing because she goes, no, that's not right. They have boys. We don't have girls. And so we kind of went along, and I guess one of our first words was when we had, uh, uh, when she was born, is she okay? And number two, was she a girl still? <laughs> Pretty proud of both of them here. Of course, Jordan can't know what kind of stir she's caused in her father's side of the family. <laughs> To her grandpa Eugene, and even to her cousin Aiden, whose first birthday is next month, she's really just a happy little baby, healthy and thriving. The miracle of her successful birth last year is enough for them. The fact that she's a girl is the cherry on top of a birthday cake that's taken six generations to bake. In Choctaw, Galen Culver, News Channel 4. Is this a great state or what? So cute. Jordan's dad is a fireman and paramedic with Midwest City. Her mom, Heather, is a nurse at Midwest City Regional Hospital. The most accurate forecast with the forewarned storm teams, Mike Moore. Most of our state, Oklahoma weather great this Friday afternoon, but there are some heavy boomers out there. Let's show those to you on the forewarned storm tracker, and these are to the west of Oklahoma City, south of I-40, between Elk City and Altus in the southwestern parts of our state. These popped up pretty quickly about an hour ago. They're moving to the west north Northwest from Roosevelt, Lone Wolf, Willow, Granite, north of Mangum, just to the south of Eric, um, perhaps a little pea-sized hail near Lone Wolf and just northwest of Roosevelt. And again, these are not moving toward the metro. Here's our view from the Sky Cam right now in Oklahoma City, and we have no risk of any rain. We're in good shape. Temperatures are nice and mild this afternoon. Checking in the low 70s as we head toward a Friday evening, and we have a clear to partly cloudy sky. We're 73 degrees right now here in Oklahoma City. The winds are from the northeast, so that's a drier wind now filtering into our state, so that'll help keep the rain away from Oklahoma City, and our humidity is low at 39 percent. Daytime high today was 75, and our morning low was 49, and we uh, continue with a dry month of April, and uh, we're in good shape for the year, and these temperatures do average above normal. It was a warm day. You know, the tree pollen continues to really be a problem for so many Oklahomans. It is right back up into the allergy alert category, and many have already sensed this even yesterday by calling in. The grass pollen is low, and the mold spore count is also low. Beth, 
Bethany has 72, Edmond 71, Midwest City is 72, Mustang is 72 along with Yukon, and some thunder down near Altus where it's 70. Clinton can just hear a little rumble down south. It's 70. Ponca City is partly cloudy in 69 and mostly sunny in Tulsa and 70. A lot of rain now to the south and to the west of Oklahoma City. This is the storm we've been tracking for the weekend, but it's putting its brakes on right now and won't make much more progress to the east. If anything, it might back up a little bit and completely weaken tonight and tomorrow. Let's go back to the tracker in case uh, folks are driving down towards San Antonio. Notice it's dry to Dallas. Then you encounter some rain and thunderstorms down near San Antonio where there is some severe weather now just west of town and a lot of rain out in the Texas Panhandle. Again, this is not making much more progress into our state. So here's future track. Watch the rain, how it comes into southwest Oklahoma and just stops. Puts its brakes on. So a few clouds here in Oklahoma City later tonight and for a while tomorrow. Temperatures will be a little bit cooler, but most of our state will be dry as the rain will be down across southern and central Texas and western Texas. Might still see a bit of light rain for the Texas Motor Speedway this weekend. High temperatures tomorrow will trade in the 70s for some upper 60s to lower 70s. Dallas will be 74 on Saturday. Wichita 65. Kansas City 61. Branson 60. 63, and with the rain out west, temperatures in the 50s and 60s in Lubbock, Amarillo, and Santa Fe. And um, San Antonio tomorrow will be in the lower 70s with a chance of some light showers. For Oklahoma tonight, chance of rain southwest. It will stay there overnight. Lows in the low 40s to lower 50s. And for Saturday, partly cloudy, slight chance of rain southwestern Oklahoma. Highs will be in the middle to upper 60s and a few low 70s. For the Metro this Friday evening, we will stay dry. Temperatures in the comfortable low 60s by 9 o'clock tonight. By the 10 p.m. news, clear to Partly cloudy in 58, dry in 47 Saturday morning, partly cloudy in 69 Saturday afternoon. Sunday also looks dry, just a bit cooler in 64 for the high. And that next chance of rain comes in late Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday of next week. Again, a lot of gardeners getting out there. No signs of any real cold air in sight, good. so we're in good shape. We're not going to complain. Not this time. Yet. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> next in sports, the Sooners and Ends gymnastics team advance to the team finals tomorrow. And the national spotlight of sports on San Antonio. We're on Bob Berry Jr. covering the final four. Hey, Bobby. Lance, the Oklahoma State Cowboys practiced inside the Alamo Dome today, getting ready for tomorrow's game. Will this weekend be it for Eddie Sutton? We'll have more coming up live on Oklahoma's News Channel 4. Now, sports with Bob Barry. Good evening, everyone. The Cowboys are now in the final 24 hours of preparation for the national semifinal game tomorrow night at 5.07. As you know, dancing Bob Barry Jr. is with us from San Antonio. Don't dance. Don't dance, but just tell us what's going I'm on. I'm not, Dad. <laughs> now, the Stillwater Stomp, we'll leave that to uh, Glenn Cyprian and the rest of the Cowboys and hope that they get a lot of time to stomp around here in San Antonio. But as you might imagine, we've whispered about it during the regular season, and now as this magical ride comes to a close for Oklahoma State, whether it's Sunday or Tuesday after they win the national title, the question here is, will Eddie Sutton retire, step down, quit as OSU's head coach if he wins the national championship? Championship Monday. Here are some thoughts from some people who think they know. I mean, I I think, but you you never know once you get put in that situation. If it was me, I would probably go out that way. That means you won your last game. But I don't think that he he thinks that way. I think that you know uh, he'll probably be back, and that's good. You know, I think whatever he wants to do, uh, everybody in our family is going to be supportive of that. About it, and, and I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I could I could certainly see if if they're able to win these two games this you know, Saturday and Monday that he may uh, decide to retire. And what a what a great way to go out, uh, go out on top and uh, leave Sean. And I do believe that it will be Sean. He's very deserving, and uh, I think he's one of the best assistants in the country. We always thought when we were playing in 2000 that if we could win him one, he might retire. Um, he loves it. He loves the school. He loves coming to work every day. But I think finally now it's, it's the written rule instead of the unwritten rule that Sean will be the next head coach. Um, you, you can't top that. He's 68 years old. Uh, he's got a bit of a bad hip. He's got all his grandkids to, to go and play with. And Coach Sutton has a team that desperately wants to win this national championship for him. It would be the first for Eddie Sutton. And, of course, he's got the distinction, Dad, of being the coach to take four teams, four different schools, to the NCAA tournament. Who knows? But we'll find out. Hopefully, we'll get to judge that come Tuesday after OSU wins it all. We'll have more from San Antonio on the Final Four at 6 o'clock. Back to you. Okay, Bob, thank you. The Oklahoma men's gymnastics team advanced to tomorrow's team finals in the NCAA championships in Champaign, Illinois. In today's preliminary round, the Sooners finished third behind Penn State 
in Michigan, but it was good enough to qualify for the 16 finals. OU will attempt to win their third straight national gymnastics championship when the action gets underway tomorrow at 7 o'clock. The Sooners and the Cowboys baseball teams are in action tonight. Oklahoma State will host Texas A&M at Reynolds Stadium in Stillwater 7 p.m. And the Oklahoma Sooners of Coach Larry Cochelle are on the road in Lawrence, Kansas to play a series starting tonight at 6 p.m. against the Jayhawks. And back to basketball quickly. The Associated Press has named St. Joseph's head coach Phil Martelli as their college coach of the year. And also from St. Joseph's, guard Jameer Nelson won the Associated Press Player of the Year. Guess what? OSU beat St. Joseph's, and oh. Jameer missed the last shot <laughs> that gave OSU the win. But they're, out, they're deserving, huh? however. Very well, much That's so. another story you really yes. should have wanted. <laughs> Next time. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> We're back right after this. <laughs> She's a mother and a coach at the local Y. Tonight, she's behind bars accused of molesting a young boy. At 6, we'll tell you why the victim didn't want to cooperate with authorities. And they become two of OSU's most recognizable fans. You can bet they're in San Antonio. Kevin Ogle caught up with the dynamic duo today. We'll hear from them coming up. Finally at 5, a lot of vroom vroom going out <laughs> of the state fairgrounds this weekend. Pretty good. The National Street Rod Association, Southwest Street Rod Nationals are in high gear. You can catch all sorts of pre-1949 rides. Lots of walking and gawking at the fancy vehicles. Admission 10 bucks for adults, 3 bucks for the kiddos. And the show just closed for today, but the street rodders will be showing off their stuff. State Fair Park tomorrow and Sunday, 8.30 to a lot of fun. Good night. See you.